Hello, this is Fear Dragon, and welcome to Breaking Out, the show by North American StarCraft 2 players. Here on this show, we take a look at up-and-coming North American talent. Each week, we check out a new player to get a feel for their personality and their playstyle. On Thursday, we interview the player to try and find out more about who they are and why you should care about them. On Friday, we watch three of their games as we cover their playstyle in each of the three matchups. Saturday, we take a look at an awesome game that they've played and relax with a little bit of fun as we recap the week and get an analysis of the games. Breaking Out will cover 8 players before it culminates into the Breakout Invitational. With a minimum prize pool of $1,000, we find out who is the most likely player to break out of the North American scene. But enough of that, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Hope you guys enjoy the show! Hello, hello, welcome to Breaking Out, the show about North American StarCraft 2 players that you need to know about. Today on the show, we are opening it up with the awesome game of the week for the week of IBD Fog. And joined with me once again is Boisterous SC2. How are you doing today, man? You won't let me leave. I'm going back to this joke, Fear Dragon. Oh, yeah, I bet you're excited. We're going to go ahead and jump into the top left hand corner of the map and introduce the first player which is going to be the Red Zerg player representing IVD Gaming. It is the highlight player of the week, Fog. And down here in the bottom right-hand corner, we have his opponent, the amazingly sexy and totally, you know, somebody I would I, I would do a lot of stuff with. It's Chorus Believe, or Naya. And Definitely not, not biased at all, by the way. You're not saying that because you're also on core gaming, of course. I have no idea what you're talking about. Naya's just a beautiful man. <laughs> All right, but with that being said, this is going to be a Zerg versus Protoss, and I'm actually happy because that was the that was the first time this week I got to introduce Fog. Every single time you also got to introduce him. Well, that's because you always, you know, I mean, I had to get you back on track a few times, which isn't which isn't usual of our relationship. I try I... to like get you. I try to get through every cast with you, maybe considering the fact that I might be a squirrel that's just really good at human impressions. You know, I I have noticed some of these tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have a tendency to get a little bit off track, but you know, during the openings of these Protoss vs. Zergs, there's not a whole lot going on. I mean, for example, Naya is just going to win the Gateway expansion, opening up Double Gas, and we're probably going to find out what he's going to be up to in like four or five minutes. So, right, let's let's just talk a little bit more about these two players. I mean, okay, first of all, Naya, he is a little bit known for uh, being a bit aggressive. And not being afraid to be a little bit cheesy sometimes on the ladder, uh, which I believe this was a ladder game, so it I think that this could be a little bit of a test to see how well Fog deals with that. But at the same time, I mean Naya he can play a, a straight up macro game as well. I've I've seen him do so and do relatively well with it. Yeah, most certainly. And I would say just the fact that they're playing blue and red means it's a straight up that it's a that's the ladder, ladder game. game. Well, you know what? Maybe, maybe these players really just like red and blue. Okay, maybe there's no player games. really likes red and blue. When was the last time you casted like a team league where someone picked red versus blue? Okay, touche. But <laughs> I have I have a theory. Okay, I have a theory about colors and the color choice that you pick, influencing the game and how your opponent perceives you. Imagine a player that picks red. And I know that there are studies around that have shown this, uh, as we do see Fog actually opening up with a relatively aggressive opening, getting that gas geyser up. But I mean, when a player picks red, and you see red things, you immediately assume that they're more aggressive. Whereas if they pick a much more passive color, like blue, you assume that they're a little bit more passive and defensive. So, you can make your opponent think that you're being more aggressive than you actually are by just picking the color red. Or vice versa, with blue. Um, I mean, I think you're racist right now. I'm not sure. I mean, you're, you're associating colors with traits. That's not cool, Fear Dragon. It's not I, cool, man. I, it's... All right, Wait, what if someone I, picks, what if someone picked, like, purple? You'd just be like, oh, man, they're going to come over and steal all my minerals. What? <laughs> I don't know. Where did that go that from? A, that was a reach. That was a little bit of a reach, but... <laughs> It's okay, the game is starting to shape up a little bit as we are seeing Naya actually go for that kind of gateway wall in that you normally do go for with this kind of uh, play with the gateway expansion. But, you know, this is going to allow Naya to potentially go for some kind of early 4-gate aggression or even 3-gate aggression, depending on which one he just opts to do. The 4-gate aggression is 
can be really scary, but you generally do want to just kill off that third expansion or at least do a lot of damage. The three gate aggression, it's a little bit more of a lighter pressure and allows you to kind of get up your tech a little bit faster. And it looks like that's actually going to be the variant that we'll see out of Naya. Oh, Boisterous, what is Fog up to right now? I don't really know. I mean, I he's a getting a lot of Zerglings. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is actually not super normal right now. Normally, you're seeing the Zerg player just say, well, okay, time to take my third expansion, la di da di da um, I'm, I'm wondering if Fog maybe saw, okay, there's a gateway expansion going up, the Nexus is going up. Maybe he's concerned about that kind of early three gate or four gate aggression. And he made these Zerglings preemptively. But he's actually going to be able to poke in at the front, and oh god, this actually just might be a really, really good identification by Fog, saying, well, Pearl Square is not really going to have a whole lot to defend over here, and he managed to pick off one of these Stalkers, Militia Corps doing a lot of damage. Blisters, what do you think about this? I think this is some typical red play. It's quick and dirty, Fear <laughs> Dragon. I'm, I'm offended right now. Me <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we see Fog actually managing to bust through. But not do that much economic damage on the Zerglings. In fact, not really doing any economic damage at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he doesn't really do a whole lot uh, with those Zerglings in terms of economic damage. But, I mean, he does force, force the foot down overcharge, which is actually maybe like an undervalued thing. Because you imagine that maybe Naya decides to go for some early 3 gate aggression. Suddenly, yeah. he doesn't have the energy to recall out or throw down time warps. He's going to have energy for a time warp soon, but I mean... Really, it's a matter of not being able to recall out that could make a big difference. And that makes it much, much easier to clean up. But Naya actually just going to be adding on a lot more gateways, actually. He's going to be going up to, let's see, is that is that eight gateways? Oh, man. Eight gateways with Blink being researched? But I'm yeah. pretty sure I know what this That's, is. Uh, I mean, this is definitely not 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 usually of a blue, of a blue persuasion. Not all players go for, uh, <laughs> go for this sort of aggression. Generally, you just see the blue players being a little bit more passive, or at least you imagine them being so, but Naya actually just planting a pylon right in front of Fog's vision. Talk about aggressive with your pylon placement, but spine Man, claws are burrowing for Fog. Usually blue players are a little bit smarter with their pylon placement. Okay, okay, call it, call it off with the freaking colors, okay. man. I'm All done, right. I'm done. That was the last one. Alright. Alright, so we have Naya pushing forward with this 8-gate blink stalker. This is going to be a huge push. Uh, and it looks like he's just gonna go blinking right into the main base. He is gonna be able to snipe off a queen at this point, maybe get a couple of drones, but we do have the reaction from Fog coming out straight away, pulling his drone, pulling all of his drones, along with both of his zerglings and, uh, and all of his roaches back. But it looks like Naya might just be able to take a fight here. I mean, Naya's army is pretty scary, especially considering the fact that he can blink it down. Uh, and this army gets suddenly very frightening. Yeah. Eight stalkers are, are not an easy thing to hold. I mean, a lot of minerals were invested into building those spine collars, but they're not really super useful at defending this main base. And now we end up seeing the drones being pulled off. Time Warp just being utilized so, so well. Time Warp finally does expire. It was thrown down a while ago. Blink Stalkers doing a great job of staying alive, and Fog could just be in so much trouble right now. You can see his drone count has dwindled down to 37. If he takes any more damage, he's just going to be falling further and further behind at this point. Yeah, most certainly. And Naya is not going to let off the gas pedal right here. He's going to be going right for it. And then oh, we have a geez. massive blinking on so many units. And oh man, this is going to be hard for Fog to turn around. I mean, these, these stalkers are just going to do an incredible amount of damage. Luckily enough for Fog, he doesn't have his roach board in his main base. So even, even if everything gets sniped out here, he's still going to be able to hold. Uh, but it's definitely going to be a rough hold. Yeah, the stalkers are getting forced back. Oh, actually, Naya, a little bit of miscontrol. Blinks a couple of stalkers not to the low ground and ends up losing their lives. But Naya does not manage to escape with quite a few of those stalkers. Still has some more reinforcing warpins. And wow, Fog, I mean, he really likes to macro take the lake game, but he is actually already droning up. Does he actually feel safe already? I cannot imagine he does. I think he might just be losing his mind. I... I cannot come up with another exclamation, man. Fog definitely feels really comfortable, and actually, he's managing to push this back. I, maybe we are the lo ones losing our minds, boisterous, but oh, these roaches, I feel like they may be overcommitting just a little bit. Yeah, just a tad bit. We have that blink forward coming forward yet again, and the Fog just taking so much damage from these, and this is Stalkers. They're just able to hemorrhage uh, Fog. The real issue here is that Naya isn't blinking up until the main base again. I think if he did that, I mean... He can pretty much go right for the jugular right now. 
Um, the only thing that's really preventing him from attacking is attacking right into those spine crawlers. Yeah, he does have to be a little bit careful about that fog. Regrouping with his roaches. Nothing over in the main base, though. Just those drones that are not going to be too effective against those stalkers. And it looks like Naya is going to be blinking over to the main base. Single stalker left behind on low ground. He's just going to kind of wait patiently as he focuses down the lair. And boisterous. Fog is looking to be in a lot of trouble. Transfuse is going down. Oh my god. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. 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 go down. But no more transfusers left. Two stalkers for it. Yeah, he had to sacrifice quite a few of those stalkers. Now, the big question is, Fog has a lot of roaches, but is it enough to actually go for some kind of counter-aggression? I mean, he's actually losing his third expansion out of the spine crawlers, trying to defend it, but it's not going to be enough to push back these stalkers. And Transfuse is coming out out of the wazoo, but it's not enough. Oh, wow. Oh, man. And it looks like... Oh. Og will finally be able to push this back, but he's at one, he's at one base. I mean, he's gonna need to do a lot here. Well, this, this is a very problematic situation, Boisterous, and honestly, I'm not entirely sure what Fog does here, unless he just managed to do an absurd amount of uh, damage with this counterattack. Now, the one advantage that he has going for him is that Naya, I mean, hasn't had a great opportunity to really tech up behind all this. He is obviously investing into those stalkers, but Naya still has a great defensive position with all these warp gates here in the front. It's gonna be difficult for these roaches to make a whole lot happen. Yeah, I mean, Fog's gonna have to dive into a real bangle to get it to get through this wall right now. It looks like he's gonna be going right forward. He does manage to snipe off a warp gate, which is nice, and it looks like he's gonna be pushing forward at this point. This is really ballsy, but I'm not sure if it's, you know, smart ballsy or stupid ballsy. As he does get pushed back, yeah, we got portals on the way. It's it's really really weird because, I mean, Fog is a macro oriented player, so I, I understand that he wants to get some damage done and kind of trade armies, but I feel like these uh, these trades aren't necessarily cost effective, and I'm concerned about maybe just a counterattack from Naya if he doesn't trade very cost effectively. Because I mean, he doesn't have any kind of economy to reproduce these roaches, but now he's starting to get some pretty good trades. He's gonna have to back up though, because I mean the, the the stalker count is actually just a little bit too high for these roaches to deal with. Yeah, and Naya making a little bit of a faux pas here, actually keeping his immortal up in the main base. I think could be super useful in these engagements right now. But it looks like he will be able to push Fog back at this point, and there the immortal is coming down. It's walking. It just had to catch its breath a little bit. It just got warped in all the way from higher. I mean, <laughs> indeed. And I mean, Naya just kind of focusing on all this micro, because that is where this entire game is kind of being boiled down to. It's a lot of that micro at the front lines. But as you said, Naya does manage to push back, and he keeps his natural expansion alive. And we have a one base Zerg player who's just now taking their, retaking their main base uh, versus a Protoss player who has up his robotics facility. There's no lair tech for the Zerg player. He's just starting it. God, Boisterous. I, I don't see what Fog does in this game. Like, yeah, where does he go it's... from here? I don't know. I mean, honestly, Naya could probably just push him win. He has the two Immortals. He has the firepower now to actually break through the front, really. Uh, whereas he kind of didn't before now. Of course, we do have seven spine crawlers coming out from Fog. Uh, and he does also have the two still at the third base location that he should probably shift back. But at the same time, I mean, I still don't know if it's enough. Those Immortals just do so much damage. Yeah, one nice little thing is that at least the creep spread has been relatively good from uh, Fog and has continued to get that creep spread out there, so that will give him a little bit more anticipatory, anticipatory warning, I should say, uh, of that attack moving out and kind of shift over from making drones to making roaches. But honestly, right now he's, he's just continuing to make roaches, and with the lair tech finishing up, I'm curious, is, is Fog just saying, well, let me just try and stay alive for now, and eventually I'll be able to get up the economy to back this up? I I don't I, know, man. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, this, at the same time, you can you can say a lot of similar stuff about Believe at this point, because he is not going for the throat, and it looks like he's finally ready to push out at this point, but this is still super late. I mean, he could have pushed out while the hatchery was rebuilding in the main base and be fine. But now Fog's kind of starting to get his feet up under him. Uh, he's still a long way away from recovering to the point where he was before that first push, but he's not nearly as far away as he was. And we do have an infestation pit on the way. Well, also we have a small little roach counterattack with just about 11 roaches kind of barreling down the front. And by barreling down the front, I mean that they're kind of gently wading away, kind of washing away at that, uh, that warp gate. And do manage to take out a pile and knock down the wall. And they're going to be able to have to go after some of these pros, but 
more importantly, he's actually just keeping Naya at home because, I mean, Naya doesn't really want to waste the Warpins, I guess, uh, on the aggressive side. He wants to deal with these Roaches with his main army. That is a questionable decision from Naya, to say the least, because, I mean, his mm. his time in this game is starting to run out. I mean, this is really, it's a solid two-base aggression play. It's a solid two-base aggression play, but that's what it is. It's going to be hard for him to transfer out of this, and we can see that because he still hasn't dropped the third base yet, uh, even despite his lead currently. Yeah, I, I feel like a third base would definitely be a great decision from Naya, but he does actually have a lot of minerals saved up. I think that he probably is planning to do something of the sort soon, but no, he's actually going to be going for the wall off once again with the pylons. Oh, cancels it for the immortal. Needs one more immortal to sneak out of there. And warping in a lot of sentries. I, is Naya just going to go for it and not worry about a third? I, I mean, he has a really scary army, but there are a lot of spine crawlers. Yeah, I feel like this is about six minutes late because now we have swarm hosts on the way, and one thing that swarm oh hosts God. are pretty good at is just holding a location. Do we have uh, an especially? Okay, we have an I... observer coming out. Hmm. Hmm. I'm still, I'm oh, still not gosh. sure about this because the thing is, is that Naya's gonna have a hard time pushing into that. He, he looks like he's gonna be pulling back yet again to try to deal with these roaches. And oh man, Naya just letting his lead slip from his fingers right now. Well, I don't know, boys. Just, I mean, he doesn't obviously want to just let these roaches kill off his entire base and turn this into a base trade when he doesn't really need to. Because, I mean, he just has, like, so much better of an army. But, I mean, at the same time, that's a lot of roaches that Fog is losing over here to kill off a lot of these probes. So, I mean, theoretically for Naya, Fog is already on a terrible economy. Yeah. It's going to be difficult for him to reproduce that army that he just lost. And even with, I mean, as amazing as Swarmos are, there is an Observer out. And I feel like Naya still has a slightly better position in this game. Uh, I I mean, I still don't think, because Naya doesn't have any of those power units to actually push into the to the swarm host mm. like he doesn't have a colossus he can hold them off sure with the sentries they can't really be offensive but they weren't going to be offensive anyway fog's in a terrible position to do that so yeah. naya he's gonna have to try to force himself through 10 uh 12 swarm hosts going up to 15 swarm hosts and that doesn't work out so well for a protoss army yeah this is gonna be a little bit difficult i mean even with the immortals helping out against the spine colors now you're actually losing a lot of these stalkers yeah. engaging these uh locusts but i mean what choice does he have he needs to make this attack happen now because if he gives fog too much time i mean this foremost count is just going to continue to build up and force tools go down god is naya being forced to back up well it looks like he's he's gonna just take a different route which is actually something i kind of like but at the same time there's already creep spread you just see it yeah I... <sighs> I mean, I think Naya, he didn't need to attack right now. He needed to attack like three minutes ago. He should have just taken the base trade because he could have won the base trade with flying colors. I mean, look at his army. It wouldn't have even been a challenge. Ooh. Probably his, his four immortals probably could have challenged Whoa. the roach army of Naya. Look at this war prism harassment oh, going on over in the main base. He's trying to take out a spike collar. Oh my god. Ridiculous transfusions going down, keeping that spike collar alive for ages. But a couple of uh, blink stalkers also going into the back of the natural expansion. Maybe trying to pull a lot of those locusts back there, but... Fog doing a pretty good job of splitting up his locusts and keeping the army back at the front line and also managing to clean up those stalkers and actually getting the queens and the spine collar to clean up all the zealots with the war prison pressman. I I agree with you, Boisterous. I, I feel like this attack should have come in a while ago. But, I mean, Naya still does have a third expansion up now and he still has like a decent pro count to mine edit, whereas Fog literally does not have another expansion more minerals to speak of, really. Uh, I, I I hardly count like the 200 to like 300 minerals in his main base as like really being much of an economy. Yeah, but Fear Dragon, the uh, the supply count tells the tale. Naya was at 170 supply to 120, oh, and now they're even. That is that, true. That is crazy from Fog. Uh, it looks like we have one suicidal swarm host trying to lead the charge. <laughs> not, not quite sure what he's doing. It looks like he does figure out his mistake. He realizes I he's not I was a locust. A locust. <laughs> he is just made of locusts. He's like, don't we don't don't we just take them to the battlefield with us, like on our backs? 
Yeah, why can't swarm hosts just pop the eggs on their backs and then act as like mobile turrets with like locusts on their backs? Just be Maybe like, the, I'm convinced that the locusts, it's, they're kind of like ducks, like a little like baby ducks. Like, <laughs> and right. you know, the, the, as soon as they see, the first thing that they see, they immediately think is their mother. So if they saw the, if they saw the swarm host, they would just stay there. So instead, they get the locusts out and then they go and seek out their mother. And now they say, oh, we found our mothers and they're going to kill off so many of those stalkers. But the stalkers do manage to blink up in the main base, greeted by three spine cores. God, Fog just has so many spine cores to deal with this kind of stuff. I'm now just focusing on how awesome it would be if swarm hosts were like turned into aggressive units to everything. If like oh locusts just attacked everything that they saw, <laughs> that would be amazing. Oh. But it looks like we are going to have these blink stalkers trying to hold it off. But they have the locusts on the high ground. They have the queens oh. or the locusts on the low ground. They have the queens on the high ground. They now have the locusts on the high ground, and it's just too much. He's gonna have to blink back. And Knight has lost a substantial number of stalkers over there. Um, and by the way, guys, the, the black bars on the screen right there is just kind of blacking out some of the chat. That, we're not gonna really too, uh, talk about too much, but you know, I I am a little bit concerned for Naya now because he is getting out Colossus, which is gonna be nice. But geez, there are a lot of swarm hosts out on the map now. It's twenty one. How does he How does he manage this, boisterous? Oh, I mean, no, I'm sorry, I got distracted reading the chat. Um, <laughs> uh, I really I don't know. Again, Naya waited. Wait, like unbelievably too long. Um, and now there's 11 investors on the way. What? Oh my god. Oh god. Well, this this could actually uh, not be going uh, worse right now for Naya, as I mean, he's going to be up against investors, swarm hosts, and very, very soon, as it looks like, Fog wants to start getting aggressive. He has the power army composition that he needs to push in. And I'm not sure if Naya has the army that he needs to actually defend this. He has a lot of Archons, which can be great. He has the Colossus out. He has a second Colossus coming. He has sentries. So he has a great amount of splash damage and a great amount of delaying tactics. But is it going to be enough? I, I mean, that's exactly what they're after. Delaying tactics. And he can kind of hold the fourth base. But, you know, that would kind of be good. But at this point, the, the race rules of the Zerg player and the Protoss players have swapped if you have this amount of Swarm Hosts. It's not on the Protoss player to be defensive and just last until he gets the giant death ball and then go kill the Zerg player. Now the Zerg player kind of has a way to react. It's kind of like when Wind Winchesters were first, dis were first discovered in Wings of Liberty and you went like Windfest or Broodlord. It wasn't, it wasn't on you anymore. You know, you could be like, all right, I'll be the defensive guy. You can just, you can try to be aggressive and throw yourself at my body, but uh, I have too many spikes on it. I have too many Swarm Hosts. Yeah, and I mean, the locusts are just kind of barreling into the third expansion. Don't manage to do a whole lot over there, as the probes do kind of get pulled over to one side. And I, but I just don't know, man. This army positioning for fog. Oh, but the locusts! The locusts are going into the fourth base, and oh. it looks like they have a an open nexus. There is nothing here to defend, and those locusts do an absurd amount of Jeez. damage. They did a fourth of that Nexus's health in one hit. Oh my god, 13 damage per shot, and with that many Locusts, you can just... It's, it's literally going in for suicide missions. Wow! I, okay, did you see that that was super yeah. sick? He just... Yeah, he, he just saw the an observer blur. with fungals. He just saw the blur on the map, and that is... Oh, actually, okay. He had, he had some Overseers, okay. So a little bit less cool than I thought, but still. Man just killed off the observer. That's going to be really annoying, because... Right now, Naya really wants to make more Colossus. Like, that is going to be his main focus. Get out more Colossus, deal with those damn Swarmos. But now he has to kind of stop that Colossus production, to st uh, make another Observer. That's that's really annoying. Yeah, and it looks like we have Fog moving in with some Changelings, but they are going to get picked off. They were trying to be tricky, but they weren't tricky enough, Fear Dragon. But we have the, the Locusts coming in, the slowest Snipe Squad in the world. And let's just watch this, Fear Dragon. Let's just uh, watch that happen. You know, Boisterous, you call them the slowest sweat snipe squad in the world, and they may move, move slow, but damn, they have the heart of gold, because they can... They put everything into those attacks, man. Wow. Um, <laughs> I think that, uh... I mean... I think that Fog uh, is doing pretty well in this game. I mean, he's literally limited Naya to long-distance mining at this point. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I mean, Fog's, Fog's doing okay. So... At this point, 
Naya is forced into a position where he has to attack into all these Spankos and all the Locusts, and the Infestors are also going to be able to fungal down, fungal down this entire army, stop them from really being able to advance in and avoid these Swarmos. More and more Spankos continuing to go up. The, the Colossus are actually doing a pretty good job of pushing in over here, but is it going to be enough? The Force Fields are starting to run dry, maybe? Kind of? I mean, these force fields are freaking beautiful from Naya, but I just oh don't know God. if it's enough. These locusts, he can't kill them. <laughs> There's so many swarm hosts. There is. He's starting to push in. They're actually getting kind of close, boisterous. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, but the entire beef of his army oh, is God. gone. There's 28 swarm hosts. Oh 28 God, those, spear dragon. Those investors are still fungo growing, boisterous. They're still fungo growing. Those they're, Colossus they're, are going to die in the fungal growth. They are growing the Colossus to death. Oh my god. And it looks like he doesn't have to wait for the fungal growth to kill off the Colossus. The Locust managed to finish it. And GG ends up being effectually done. And god, Ivan E. Fog going to take that game. That was, uh, that was an interesting game, Boisterous. Believe freaking through it though. I mean, uh, man, yeah. I can't take away from Fog because he did a really nice job of sticking in there. You know, yeah, great amount of stick to it. Resistance, but yeah, <laughs> go ahead. I, mean, I know what you're gonna say. I mean, it's like he attacked you. He his counter attack was eleven roaches. Warp in six stalkers and go for the all in. Just a. Yeah. He did have the mothership core as well, which is what I, I feel like he could have maybe recalled back home. If he was concerned about like the counterattack, like at least you know take out take out one more base or something. It's like he didn't need to. He had like twelve hundred minerals. Just expand to your opponent's fourth. Just take that <laughs> as your base. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <sighs> Few mistakes being made by Core Gaming's Naya, but Ivy Fall definitely is hanging in there and showing that you know what, no game is unwinnable. Yeah, pretty much. As long um, as you have swarm hosts, Spirit Dragon. As, as long as you have swarm hosts and you have patience and resistance. Man, as long as you're a dirty red. <laughs> as long as you're a dirty <laughs> You know, this was an entire this was the biggest mind game because the blue player ended up being the most aggressive player. And the red player ended up being the most defensive player. So both of these players playing to the mind games, man. Playing to the mind games. It was those red roaches, okay? They're intimidating when they're running into your natural expansion. You're like, oh god, it looks like there's 11, but really, I feel like there's 27. And then you have to hunt, run back home, okay? You can't argue with the colors, right? With that being said, guys, that is going to put an end to the awesome game of the week, Boisterous. It's just going to be quiet now. The Boisterous, where can people catch you at? If people want to go follow me, you can follow me over at twitter.com at Boisterous SC2, over on YouTube.com slash Boisterous SC2, or over on Twitch.tv slash Boisterous SC2. That is correct. And now, guys, mm -hmm. we're going to go ahead and jump into the arcade segment of the fun day. Actually, I'm thinking about yeah. just renaming it to the awesome day. because I, I that, that's, a, that's a good point. I, I, but I, I mean, think it's just a, it's a day of awesome. We, we but watched I mean, the Fear, awesome game. Fear Dragon, let's be honest. I think I figured out what that game was. That game was like if a... Uh, and just cut it there. Yeah. <laughs>